Last time we talked about travel books and I realized, hey, these are all written by white guys. Nothing wrong with white guys, but I wanted to read from a different perspective, so I started searching for other voices. I started by reading two female travel writers from the 1930s. The first is Freya Stark. I read her book, A Winter in Arabia, about her 1937 trip to Yemen. The book starts with a flight out of Aden, and from the very first page, I was enchanted. Here's a British Italian female in her 30s, unmarried, no children, setting off across the desert with an archaeologist and a geologist, also women. Stark is a thoughtful observer and gifted writer. She leaves us with vivid descriptions of the desert, flowers, and occasional trees, and the relationships she develops with various guides, and mares, helpers, and children, and visits to women living in harems. Despite her intrepid, adventurous spirit, she can also give voice to the colonialist, almost casual racism of the times, writing about the Italians bringing civilization to Abyssinia and treating some of her hired help as subhuman. Yet she's aware and seems to become more so, barely escaping violence more than once. I think it's worth a read. She speaks Arabic. She delights in the desert treks, the houses and communities in which she's allowed to live, the long conversations and the human to human connections. The second book I want to mention is Congo Solo, written by American Emily Hahn and features her travels in the Congo and Tanzania in 1931, visiting anthropologist Patrick Putnam and staying to live among the mostly African community in which he had settled. She first published this book upon her return to the United States, but was forced to drastically edit it by Putnam's family, who were incensed by the vivid descriptions of his relationship with his beloved, an African woman named Abenzima. Read the newer version, Han's original, and delight in her pluck and her spirit. She travels overseas via a ship full of French soldiers, wins a pastis drinking challenge, eight glasses and no hangover, and once in the Congo tries to learn Kiswahili. Again, the colonialist and racist assumptions of the day can make for very uncomfortable reading. Han becomes close with many of the Africans in her community and is horrified by the casual brutality practiced by Putnam, as well as the Belgian men in the area. These books both delighted and troubled me. It was painful to read of the impact to people, animals, and culture by Western expansionism, but I also took great pleasure in reading the firsthand experiences of these brave, curious young women in places, Yemen, Congo, I may never get to visit. There are many more books like this on my list, so contact me if you want to join in. Bon voyage and happy reading.